I'd like to give infinite honors to my Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem, and Kagwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles, the elders of GMS, that root well in true sincerity. Citations to the house of David, thou of thou died, man, women, and children out there pushing his word in truth and sincerity. Citations to the shepherds of Berea camp. Citations to the hopeful elect. May the most I raise you up in a speedy fashion. This is the brother Karal Kakahan from the shepherds of Berea camp. He's coming to you with a quick, quick sit down, just entitled The Heavenly Father. And Yahweh Shah are two different entities, man. Okay. And the reason I'm doing this quick sit down is because lately we've been on the highways and byways and we've been dealing with a lot of these uh, Christians that follow David Lynn. You know, for a lot of y'all people that don't know who David Lynn is, he's be pretty much a, a Christian that has been watching a lot of our videos. So he comes with a lot of these different narratives, even though these scriptures he bring out cuts himself the point is you know you could tell that these individuals uh watch a lot of the hebrew israelites videos and they call themselves trying to build this sword up to to combat the word which they can never do but recently what's been going on now then their next narrative is saying that the heavenly father and his son yahweh shah who this world world so ignorantly calls jesus christ are the same you know pretty much bringing up the whole you know, Holy Trinity, uh, 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 wicked doctrine that they always pushed out there saying that they all won, which is not the case. Okay. So, you know, on the highways and byways, we, uh, lit them up through the Holy Spirit, but you know, I just want to do another video just for edification, just to bring this out. It's sad that it's 2021 and we still got to go over this, but you know what? It's all for the defending of the gospel. Okay. So we got Luke 2 and 49. It says, and he said unto them, how is it that you sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? Right. And this is pretty much Yahweh Shah, who this world so illegally calls Jesus Christ, rebuking his mother, man. Why? Because at this time, when he was of 12 years old, which when you go into the scriptures, you understand at that time, that's when you considered a man. He did what? He was about his father's business. He didn't play no games, okay? He wasn't 12 years old thinking about, yo, you know, let me play some Sega Genesis or some Xbox. Or something. Nah, he was like, you know what? It's time to go out there and go do what? Bring in fruit for repentance, man. He was about his father's business, okay? But we got to unpack this right here because first things first, it says what? His father's business, which means what? He was of the same accord of his father, okay? So that shows you that what? They have the same, they they go they go by the same blueprint blueprint plan okay just like a business it all goes for a single goal matter of fact let's get this definition on businesses so we got uh, business in the uh investopedia what's up what's one of the main businesses it's a corporation it says a corporation is a business in which a group of people acts together as a single entity you see that man so guess what we used to so these are a group of people. The most high body deals with a group of individuals and spirits, okay? And their whole single goal is to do what? Is to serve the most high and his will for whatever he wants for his business. And that's what Yahweh Shah was trying to convey. Like, yo, I'm here to serve my father's business. That in itself shows you it's two different entities. He didn't say his business. The most high didn't come down to say, I'm here to do my business. No. Yahweh Shah, his son, says he's about his father's business, right? And when you deal with a business, what do you deal with? You deal with CEOs, co-CEOs, presidents, vice presidents, right? It goes down the line, but they all have one single function, which is what? To perform the task of that business, okay? If you have a trucking business, if you own a trucking business, then guess what? You're going to have truck drivers. You're going to have certain people that deal with the portals dealing with getting you loads. But their whole focus is what? To get to loads to its destination, and then from there you get an income. That's it. It's not hard to see. It's not hard. If the Holy Spirit is dealing with you, it's not hard to see. So let's go back again. It's simple. It says what? It says, Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. Okay? So he's showing the comparison. He's showing the distinction. It's the same business, but guess what? I am someone different from my father. I came here for the will of my father. Okay, we got Romans 12 and 11. It says not slothful in business, right? What business? This holy ministry that we are in. Okay, and everything that com compasses about it, man. Okay, that, 
it says fervent in spirit meaning what you supposed to be on fire for this business okay just like how you individuals out there are on fire for esau's business guess what y'all don't show up to work late okay if something happens y'all give a warning y'all go y'all there every single morning nine to five y'all don't y'all don't y'all don't complain y'all do what y'all gotta do same even more so in this whole in this truth guess what you gotta be on fire man okay you're supposed to always take this business serious it says serving the lord you see that so guess what this business is about serving the Lord, man. It said not being slothful in business. So that lets you know when you read like when you read the book of Corinthians, what we are all different parts of the body. But the whole but in general, even though we're all different parts of the body, it's all to what? Serve a, it's all to serve a purpose, man. Okay, and let's see what that purpose is. Let's let's see what this business is about. We got Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. It says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the most high and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of men. You see that? The whole duty of men. So that's your business. It's the what? The fear the most high and keep his commandments. And guess what? He brought down his son, Yahweh Shah, to do what? To implement that and to bring that back to Israel, man. Because guess what? Our Heavenly Father turned his back on us. Why? Because we as a nation went off and served other gods. And if he, and he turned his back on us. But what did he do? He brought down his son, Yahweh Shah, in the physical, man. To what? To mend us back together. So, that in itself lets you know it has to be two different entities. Because the scriptures tell you that the Most High is not a liar. So, the Most High is not going to turn his back on us. And then at the same time, say, I'm going to come down myself to mend us. No. He brought down his heavenly son to do it. His only begotten son to do it, man. And... And Yahweh Shah's goal was what? To mend us back by telling us to do what? To fear the Most High and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of men. Okay? His goal was what? To bring back souls meat for repentance, man. Let's continue. We got 2 John 1 and 9. It said, Whosoever transgressive and abideth not in the doctrine of Yahweh Shah have not the Most High. You see that, man? So if you are not abiding by the doctrine these holy scriptures of yahweh shah okay you don't have the heavenly father why because they up the same accord they have the same business okay he didn't say you don't have himself he said you don't have that you won't have the heavenly father because he's coming because he's coming with the blueprint of how to serve the heavenly father it's not hard he that abideth in the doctrine of Yahweh Shah, he have both the Father and Son. So why would he say that? You know, why why would this be here? Why wouldn't it just say you have the Father? Why would it say both? You know what? May, let's, let's go into this word both. Because you know what? Maybe we got to make it even more simple. I mean, if the Holy Spirit dealing with you, is dealing with you. But maybe we got to make it more simple. Because if we can't, I don't know how much more simple we could get than this. It says both. Let's see. And also, even, indeed, but, come on, what it says? It says two. Look at this right here. It says two. Come on, man. Both means two. So let's go back. Next one. We got Revelations 5 and 6. It says, and I beheld. And lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits the Most High sent forth into all the earth. Verse 7, and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. So who is that, man? This is Yahweh Shah taking the book, the scrolls, the whole the holy Bible, okay? Out of the hand of what? His heavenly father that was on the throne. That's showing you the difference. Okay, it's not like the most I was there playing hopscotch, you just send it to one hand to the other. No. It's right there. That's why the scriptures tell you in Revelations 1 and 3, blessed. Blessed to see that readeth. You have to read. You have to read. You have to sit here. You have to meditate. What is this saying? 
And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Well, he took the book out of his own hand. Does that does that make sense? Continuing, because like I said, I want this to be short and to the point. We got First Timothy 2 and 5. It says, And there is one power and one mediator between the Most High and man. And men, the man, Yahweh Shah Mashiach. You see that? A mediator. You know, let's get into the word mediator. Because we got to go into all these words now. Mediator it says, one who intervenes between two. You see that? So that's an in between force. That's some. That's an in between entity. Okay, so you have the Most High. That's one. You have yeah, you have Yahweh Shah, right? Who this world so inwardly calls Jesus Christ. He's in between, right? And who's on the other side of that? You have man. Because again, the most high turned his back on us. We can't deal directly uh, uh, with the Heavenly Father anymore. We have to go through Yahweh Shah. Scripture tell you again, and the most high is not a man that he cannot lie. So you can't go directly to him. You have to go through Yahweh Shah. So that's two different entities, it's two different people. It says, either in order to make or restore peace and friendship. And that's exactly what Yahweh Shah came for. To mend that bond between Israel and the Most High. Cause, I mean, and the Most High, because the Most High was done away with us. We would have been done. We would have been done. When you read the book of Hosea, he said what? Um, that we are not his people. So Yahweh Shah had to come to mend that, man. It's just, like, it's just like glue. You have two different pieces. You put glue in between to mend them together. So that would make it three different things. So let's go back. You know, I don't know how simple uh, we have to explain this, man. You know, like one more example. And this is not comparing the two saying they're exactly the same. But prime example, let's just say, you know what, I'm a, a professional boxer. And I'm like, yo, I want to fight on um, Floyd Mayweather. And let's just say Javante Davis is in the middle of it. He's like, no, no, no. You can't just go straight to him. You got to talk to me first. We got to do a contract. You can't just go straight to him. Guess what? Javante Davis and Floyd Mayweather on the same accord. They're on the same team. <laughs> I'm trying to get to Mayweather, but I can't unless I do this contract with who? Javante Davis. It's on the same team. So that's what we're saying. The Most High and Yahweh Shah are on the same team. Yahweh Shah is about his father's business. It's about his father's goals, what he wants to be done in this universe. But they are two different individuals. Yahweh Shah was the first spirit created. The Most High was never created. The Most High created Yahweh Shah. Simple. We got Daniel. Uh, let's start at 7 and 9 we got Daniel 7 and 9 it says I beheld to the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit and who's the ancient of days the most high like I was just saying the ancient of days which means what the most high didn't have a beginning he was always there it says Whose garment was white as snow. So this is talking about the description of the Heavenly Father. Okay. His garment was white as snow. And the hair of his head uh, like the per, like the pure wool. Which means what? He had white woolly hair. It says, His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as the burning, the burning fire. Which was talking about what? The chariots. Verse 10. It says, A fiery stream issued and came forth. From before him, thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were open. And this is talking about what the holy angels, man. It says, um, you know, let's. I'm gonna jump down a little bit. Matter of fact, let's continue to read verse 11. It says, I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain. And his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Verse 12. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away. Yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. Verse 13. I saw in the night visions 
and beheld one like the son of man. Talking about Yahweh Shah, our Lord and Savior, okay? Who you so ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Yeah, people out there. It says, came with the clouds of heaven, okay? Talking about what? The chariots. And came to the ancient of days. So how? And they brought him nigh before him. So how? So how is the Son of Man, Yahweh Shah, okay, Christ, as they call him, come to the ancient of days with the Most High if he is the same? If they're the same, how, how did he come to him if he is him? Y'all err. Y'all err not knowing the scriptures, man. We got John 6 and 37. I'm just going to read a little bit through here. You can read all the way down, but. Let's just do a little bit. We got John 6 and 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. So how can you give something to yourself? How can you give something to yourself? Yo, the most high, you know what? The Spirit telling me the most high going to judge a lot of y'all individuals that's playing games with the Lord, man. Because y'all trying to make the Lord look like if he's a psychopath or he's crazy talking to himself. The Most High has a has a dreadful sort of judgment for a lot of y'all here playing games, man. Because we talk to these individuals constantly out on the highways and byways. Y'all laugh, y'all smile at these priests come out joking, thinking it's a game. This is not a game. This is deadly serious, man. You have souls that's on the line dealing with the doctrine. This whole thing is about souls, meets for repentance. You're playing with people's souls, man. Yahweh Shah died on that cross for the nation of Israel to be saved. And we understand that the 144,000 elect bodies are going to be saved along with the one third. And two thirds are going to be destroyed. But guess what? Two thirds still going to be able to come back again into the kingdom of heaven as newborn babes. But the point of the matter is, you guys are trying to pervert the do holy doctrine, man. And the Most High is going to destroy y'all for that. It says, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Verse 38. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will. Hold up. You know what? But the will of him that sent me. So that in itself. You see, that, we should, that's it, man. The sit down should just be done at this point. Because how do you come... If it's the same person, how does that one person come down and say, I didn't do the will of myself, but the person that sent me, which is himself, to the, come on, man. Come on. This 2020-21, man, stop it. This is simple. Stop it. The most high is going to kill a lot of y'all individuals, man. It is what it is. I'm going to read one more, and we're going to continue. Verse 39, it says, and this is the Father's will, which have sent me, that of all which he have given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. I ain't going to say nothing about that, man. Yeah. Just got to read. It says, Philippians 2 and 6, it says, who, being in the form of of the Most High, you see that? Being in the form of the Most High, meaning what? Having the Holy Spirit, meaning what? Him coming down, all right? Having the same agenda as his Heavenly Father, right? Being a man that did not sin about the Most High's law, statutes, and commandments, about salvation, okay? The Most High gave him the blueprint, and he did what? He executed it. Being in the form of the Most High, thought it not robbery to be equal with the Most High, right? Because he is not equal to the Most High. They are of the same accord, but they are not the same person, okay? They are not the same person. He came to his father's business. Yahweh Shai even said to himself, who y'all so ignorantly called Jesus Christ said to himself, he said what? Why are you calling me good? There's nobody good but the Father. So if you were to say they're the same person, are you saying that he's saying, shoot, I'm not good, but you know, there's nobody good but me? Does that make sense? <sighs> Y'all 
verse 7 it says but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant right because he came what in the flesh and he did what he was serving man all right what the nation of israel he came as a servant to be about his father's business and was made in the likeness of man right and was made in the likeness of man he came in a fleshly body he went through the same troubles we all go through the same troubles that yahweh Shah went through okay it was a humbling experience it says verse 8 and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death right man and guess what when yahweh Shah was on that cross man he was being what obedient unto death Let's not forget, Yahweh Shah had spiritual powers, man. But in that time, when it was his last hour, guess what? The Most High took that away from him. He felt it. That's why he prayed to his father, saying, please let this cup pass over me. And the Most High answered him by what? Not answering him. By saying, you got to go through this. There isn't such thing as giving an answer without answering. And Yahweh Shah knew he had to do it. So he had to die like a man. He had to feel those thorns being being uh, uh, crushed through his head, man. He had to feel those whips being whipped upon him. This don't make no sense, because when y'all doing this, y'all are taking away the sacrifice that Yahweh Shah did, man. When y'all saying they the same. Yahweh Shah had to come in the flesh and go through this torment. So our people could be saved. And now here is 2021, the same people that Yahweh Shah died for this nation. Guess what? The same ones that's pushing out this wickedness, man. The same ones that's not acknowledging the torture that he had to go through. Saying that him and the Most High are the same. The Most High didn't come down to do this. He sent down his son to do it. That's why he said, my son, who I am well pleased with. Come on, man. It says, even the death of the cross. Like I said, I'm going to make this short, short and to the point. So last one. <laughs> like the priest, Don Juan Mayum said through the spirit, man. This is the main scripture y'all bring out like 200 times a day. In this scripture, y'all bring this out 200 times a day for real. But meanwhile, it cuts you. We got John 3 and 16. It says, for the most high, so love the world. This is the heavenly father. Okay. So love the world that he gave his only Begotten Son, we well, are ignorantly called Jesus Christ. His name is Yahweh Shah. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, how do y'all read this 24 7 and not see it's a difference? Matter of fact, verse 17. For the Most High sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So, you know what? Uh, that's it, man. You know, if y'all don't get it, y'all don't get it. Y'all don't get it, y'all don't get it, man. You know, but we understand it, though. Hope for elect. They understand it. You know, for y'all people out there that want to keep playing games, the most high got something for you. Yeah. Yeah, I want to continue to do wickedness. Hey, we just keep it scriptural, man. Y'all want to be blind? Let y'all be blind still. Y'all want to be wicked? Let y'all be wicked still. Let y'all do what y'all do. Most high judgment is coming across this whole world. And y'all that want to be stubborn, keep pushing this wickedness. Most high got a reward for y'all too, man. All right, so with that being said, I pray this has been edifying. I'd like to give any honors to my Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shah, Bashim Kakwadush, double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS that rule well in true sincerity. Again, salutations to the shepherds of bread camp, salutations to the house of David, thou art, thou died, man, women, and children, not that preach his word, true and sincerity. Salutations to the hopeful elect, may the most I raise you up in a speedy fashion. Again, this is your humble brother, humble Ak, Karal Kakahan. 
you know, shalom again to y'all. I'll keep him out there, put his word, true sincerity. Until the next time, Lord willing, shalom.